Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care uh, video series. So today I'm going to do a use case topic. Um, and, uh, and this is about patient portal messages. And a, a really interesting study I read uh, from Vanderbilt University on some uh, work they're doing that's a little bit different than the other work in the industry. So let me describe. So you have um, the patient and you have the provider. And of course, um, you know, the a level of uh, patient messages to providers is getting overwhelming. Um, and so a lot of us have been using AI to try and help with that problem. And there's two areas that we have been working on as, a, as an industry. One is um, the reply back to the patient, automatically drafting those replies using Gen AI. Um, and, uh, and that's working out pretty well. There's a lot of studies on uh, on that and a lot of people implementing that. Uh, and the other area is dealing with the inbox itself. So we're doing projects around automatically sorting urgent messages to the top or automatically forwarding messages to the right folder based on the content of the message, that, uh, that kind of thing, to make it more productive um, on the provider side to deal with the messages. So this new study is really interesting. They're focused on this which is helping the patient write a good um, initial message and using an LLM to generate follow-up questions that the patient should answer in that original message. Okay, so here's the, here's the problem uh, that they're working on. So one is that the stats are the 30% of message threads are three or more messages. So you ask a message as a patient, um, the provider asks you three days later, the provider asks you a follow-up. Uh, and then a couple of days later, you might answer that follow-up. And then a few days later, they go back. And so there's a delay of care. This is multiple messages in those inboxes. There's uh, frustration, maybe clinical, you know, the clinical situation isn't, um, is delayed, all that, all that good stuff. So, so that adds to the burden. Uh, so the idea is that, um, that LLMs would generate follow-up questions as you're writing that initial message. So uh, when I first heard about this concept of helping the patient, I thought, well, this is um, not that great. I mean, uh, we're helping patients be more articulate, that, that kind of thing, so providers uh, can read the message. But it's not that. It's the fact that patients often don't know what other information would be helpful to the provider in answering their uh, message. And so the project was to use an LLM to generate follow-up questions during that patient interaction. And then the patient can just answer those questions for this initial bundle. And let me give you a couple, uh, couple examples uh, of, uh, of that. So one uh, message is a patient said, I'm having a dull pain in my abdomen under my ribs on the right side, liver or gallbladder or other. I'd like to be seen. Thanks. Okay, so um, so that's a reasonable patient message. You can see, um, you can imagine lots of patients writing something like that, and it would have a level of back and forth. So the LLM generated some follow-up questions. Please indicate if you have any symptoms: fever, jaundice, blah blah blah. On a scale of zero to ten, of uh, being no pain or or ten being the worst pain, how would you rate your pain? When did you first notice that you had this pain? Have you experienced any recent injuries that might cause this? Um, are you currently or possibly uh, pregnant? Have there been any other recent um, uh, changes to your bowel movements or eating habits, et cetera? So it was uh, about six follow-up questions that um, if the patient answers, then the provider could take immediate uh, action on that, um, on that initial email. Another uh, example is, hey, I... I've got the vid. I'm not too sick, except my throat is killing me. Anything I can take? Hope you well! Exclamation, three exclamation points. So very cheery patient. Um, and uh, the LLM generated some follow-up questions. Are you having any other symptoms besides a sore throat? Do you have a fever, shortness of breath? Are you vaccinated? What medications are you taking? Uh, what does your throat feel like? Is it sore, scratchy, or something else? Um, so, so essentially, then the patient sees these follow-up questions, can kind of enhance their message, and then you could have a single back and forth with the provider. The provider will better know what, uh, what to do. So the actual study 
was evaluating the quality of these follow-up questions according to providers um, that respond to patient messages. And the answer was it worked. The, the actual study is comparing a few different models to pick the best model. A lot of AI papers are comparing models, but but regardless of model, um, it's uh, uh, the providers rated highly the questions that were asked and feel like if patients answered these questions in the initial um, uh, um, uh, basically message, then things would go uh, more smoothly. So, uh, so that's great and I think is really interesting. Um, and the next step uh, that they're uh, recommending, the sort of obvious next step, is to actually try it out in practice with patients. Um, so I thought this was, this was great. I mean, this is, a, this is a big problem. I think that particular arrow um, has not been um, addressed too much. Uh, and I thought this was a fascinating, uh, fascinating approach. So that's it. Hope that was uh, that was interesting. And until next time, bye.